Hey, Grace Chapel family. Welcome to another episode of Discipleship Discussions. I'm here with Will. Hey. And we are going through James 2. And this is uh, another packed chapter in James. James is such a great book. Um, again, not going to read the whole thing because it is kind of long. But uh, actually, no, it's not. We're only going, th- we're, we're going through uh, 1 through 13. Let's read it. You want to read it? Sure. Yeah. Let me get on the right page here. All right. The sin of partiality. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress, who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to, to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Wow. So we got to kind of break it down into showing partiality, especially to the rich. Partiality is a sin. Um, and even one sin, no matter what it is, is makes you a lawbreaker. And then I love that it ends with mercy triumphs over judgment, which has always been one of my favorite verses, because, boy, do we need mercy. Amen to that. So um, why, let's ask why, um, why would somebody say, I mean, it's kind of an obvious answer, but why would somebody show partiality to the rich in their church? Yeah, um, I'm going to go with... uh Highs and offerings. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, of, of, yeah, of course. Because the poor man, at least in this person's eyes, would have nothing to offer them. It's yeah. like, well, the rich man, he can take me to dinner. He can buy me, you know, he can send me on vacation. He can t- do the tithes and offerings. But what has this poor guy got to offer me? Nothing. It's very like, you know, me, me, me. And so... Um, yeah, I think it goes beyond even money. It's just it's kind of reminds me there's a um there's a Luke 14:12. Just going to read it really quick. Uh reminds me a lot of this. 14:12 says He said to the man who had invited him, "When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and be repaid." But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they mm. cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So I think it's kind of like it's all about being repaid. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, and I think as I as I read read these verses, it it kind of made me think like um, like if you're the rich man, what are your expectations when you get invited into? Yeah. Are you expecting to get the primo seat at at the best table mm-hmm. um you know what what is what does that say about your heart you know yeah. um what would the you know what would what would the church look like you know if you were the rich man mm-hmm. and you chose to sit in the back yeah and you chose to be you know maybe you you know you 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 tithe and you give generously you know, out of the abundance God's given you, not expecting anything in return, not expecting yeah. anything in return, and you do it almost anonymously, mm-hmm. and you know, so like, I love how James talks about the partiality, about not showing the partiality, mm-hmm. but I also think about just the heart posture of of 
of us as individuals. Like, what are our expectations if mm. if we're if we're the quote unquote rich man? Yeah, you know, or you know, do we feel like like we should be um, propped up and given something just because? we're great business individuals or we have great influence mm-hmm. or, you know, um, such and such is, this is my friend's event and I should be up there with him because I'm his friend. And yeah, it's like how a lot of churches put really successful business people on the elder board, not because they're godly men, but because of their stature and their standing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what Billy Joel does? Plays the piano. He plays the piano man. He is <laughs> not to be confused with Elton John. But uh, Billy Joel at his concerts, I don't know, he's been doing this for years. So he plays, he had a a residency at Madison Square Garden. Like he was playing like every week or every month for like the last like, I don't know, five years or something. He um, no longer sells the first, I think it's like first 10 rows. You cannot buy the first 10 rows of a Billy Joel concert. What he does is, because he said, he said, he's like, the first 10 rows are always a bunch of rich people just standing there like this, you know, like not even into the show. And he's like, while the people like in the like the um, way back seats are like you know well, Billy, but they can you know barely see him. So at Billy Joel concert, his people go out before the concert and they randomly pick people in the very very back seats and the oh, nosebleed seats. Yeah. And they say, hey, come on down and take the first ten rows. It's amazing. That's kind of. I love James, that. Yeah, that's what James is talking about here. I it's love amazing. That. Yeah, the scripture according to Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Billy knows those people who could barely afford to even go to the concert. They're not going to be like buying merch and yeah. you know, like seeing him following her on all around. It's like he knows they're not going to give anything back to him except his love. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, um, I like to just point out, obviously, that it's not a sin to be wealthy. No, I know a lot of wealthy Christians, and I think even me and you are wealthy compared to 99% of the world. So I don't think that it's a sin to be wealthy, but I do think um, that it can be easily become a snare if you're wealthy, and it can kind of shift your thinking and your perspective and your priorities if you're not careful. Um, and it's kind of like you're wearing rose-colored glasses everywhere. You're looking out a rose-colored window, mm-hmm. and um, that you look out, and it makes it hard to understand like other people's plights. So... I don't think it's a sin to be rich, but I think we need to be careful, those of us who have more than others, to not um, be like have those rose colored glasses that yeah. everything just looks perfect and we ignore the plight of the others and we don't let our perspectives get shifted and our priorities get shifted. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, James speaks to that, uh, you know, right here in verse eight. If you, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. You know, and and it's just that it's, you know, I'll go back to, I feel like I say this in almost every video. It's, it's the posture. It's the heart of Mm -hmm. what, of, of, of who we are and and how we're positioning ourselves, you know, in the kingdom to be kingdom advancers, to be disciple makers. It's the, um, you know, being able to, to, even though, you know, even if you've got 10 million in the bank, you know, to act like you've got ten dollars in the bank. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 mm-hmm. loving those people that that are less fortunate. Yeah, the way you love yourself. How are you? You know, you you you're obviously going to take care of yourself first yeah. and foremost. Yeah, but what if we put those other people in front of us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So do you think that when we're in church and we're you know I love Grace Chapel because I, I really love the unique diverse body we have. Mm-hmm. Um, we could use a little more color, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but other than that, you know, um, we got rich, we got poor, we got tall, short, fat, thin, old, young. Like we have like just a great cross section of, of yeah. everyone. And, um, you know, I think sometimes people judge a book by its cover. I have tattoos and I think sometimes, I mean, you know, people who don't know me might look at me and be like, uh, he's got tattoos. What's his, you know, I don't know, if, can he love the Lord? And, or like, you know, you got the big beard, you know, maybe someone's like, you know, like, whatever. Or, like, <laughs> you think that, I mean, I would like to think we don't do that, but I think yeah. on some level we all kind of have our prejudices and our judging people just even just kind of oh, because they're not like us. 100%. 100%. Yeah. You know, I think we have, um, you know, we have expectations and, you know, probably, you know, built in from childhood. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, uh, I live in a rural community. It's growing, but it's considered rural and you know, I'll see, you know, you'll see the, 
you'll see the guy in his, you know, out at the co-op or TSC or wherever, and he's in his, you know, ratty overalls and a and a, you know, t-shirt and covered in mud and mm -hmm. you know, uh, just ratty boots and all this stuff. And you may be, you know, um, because of how you brought up, just to go, oh, that man's like he's a hard worker. Yeah. But he's probably living paycheck to paycheck. Well, little do they know, homeboy's got, you know, three hundred acres, oh, yeah. and is is probably a multimillionaire five yeah. you know five times over. That's um, the first work for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you know so um, so yeah, just that just that worldview we have of 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 growing up and be and 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 be you know have have thoughts predetermined about people just because of how they appear. I mean yeah. that's. You know, that's something we all struggle with. I guess it ends with, uh, it talks about, you know, you, you kind of break one part of the law and you've broken the whole law, which you know, we all know. But then if you don't show, if you judge without showing mercy, you will be showing no mercy for mercy triumphs over judgment. That's, that's good and bad, good and bad news. It is. And it just speaks to why we need Jesus. Yeah. You know, why we need a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit every day. So that, so that we can be merciful and not mm -hmm. judgmental. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we're just we're we're predisposed as human beings um, in our culture, in our society. You know, I think Jimmy talked about it last week. Look, what you know, the season we're getting ready to get into, mm -hmm. and you know, you find out that this person's a Democrat, you're going to be predisposed. Yeah. Yep. Thanks to the news and the social medias and all mm -hmm. the things, you're going to be predisposed to automatically go. Well, you, then you must believe this, that, and the other. Therefore, right. we don't align. Mm -hmm. You're an evil person. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've judged them completely. Yeah. Instead of trying to take the, take five minutes and just say, "Hey, who? You know, tell me about yourself." Yeah. What do you? What do you th have a conversation? Yeah. Why? Why? Why have we stopped having conversations with people? Right. Why have we not? Um, why have we stopped being merciful to individuals just yeah. because of our earthly human predispositions? Mm -hmm. Because they make one comment to say, I believe, you know, just to say I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican or I'm independent or yeah. I'm a Braves fan or I'm a, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know, just to show them the love and the mercy and the kindness mm -hmm. that we ask for every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's hypocrisy at its finest and yeah. pride at its finest. <laughs> yes, so. it is. Yeah. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And I am, I thank the Lord for that because. Mm -hmm. That is good news. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it All is. right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, there'll be some questions up on the screen. And we look forward to talking to you again next time. Have a good one.